It's my great pleasure today to be with Lord Howarth of Fisherfield, who was the first person in the House of Lords to, Lords to complete the Munros. So it's lovely to meet you, uh, Lord Howarth. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Many thanks for uh, giving me your time. Okay. Uh, I thought, Lord Howarth, for the purposes of this interview, it'd be quite nice just to go back through your memories and your joys of completing the Munros. So, if I can take you back a number of years, when did your love of the hill start? I, I came to Scotland uh, as a medical student at St Andrews University in 1966, and the first uh, 3,000 foot mountain I ever went up in Scotland was Ben Moore with the University Mountaineering Club, the big Ben Moore in Perthshire. Um, Prior to that time I was a rock climber. Um, coming from Lancashire I climbed a lot in gritstone uh, quarries and a little bit on crags in the Lake District. But I wasn't uh, in any way into hill walking and I certainly never heard of Munro's until I came to Scotland uh, at that time. And I was only at St Andrews University for one year, um, having made a, a general mess of my studies as a medical student. But what I the place that I'd found myself most at home at St Andrews was in the Mountaineering Club uh, and we went out on the hills in all weathers and conditions um, and by the time I left Scotland uh, I'd done about uh, nine or ten Munros then one or two were deleted in, in a revision uh, of, the, of the lists around that time and a decade went by before I did any more but all the subsequent um, uh, mountains I've actually done from being based in London so um, there's been an awful amount of travelling involved in doing that. So your memories of um, when you were travelling into the hills with your colleagues from uh, college, college was that just coming straight up to Scotland or were you basing yourself around some of the hills and mountains in England and Wales at all or not? I, w I, I Climbed all the hills in Snowdonia and uh, lots of things in the Lake District, um, but uh, I didn't know the Scottish hills at all um, uh, until way later. Really, it was by it was the early, it was probably the late seventies, early eighties, before I took up uh, Baggy Munros in a serious way. We had a family holiday. Um, for several years on the run in Assent, um, so I climbed Ben Moore Assent in Conival, but there's only two Munros in that part of the world. There's all those fantastic Corbett's, uh, Quinag and Coolbag and Coolmore and, and even hills that are not even Corbett's, Sylvan and Stack Polly, and I love uh, that part of North West Scotland more than anywhere. Uh, but it did, you know, that was also beginning to get me into uh, um, climbing the nearer uh, Munros and those in the Fisherfield Forest, um, some of the most remote hills in Scotland, Alvage and generally is often thought of as the most remote Munro, was, was one of my early uh, visits. Um, so the Fisherfield uh, Six have always been had a special place in, in, in my heart. It's a fantastic wilderness area and I'd love to come back to it. So Many trips were made when you were based in London, come yep. up to Scotland. You're talking about great distances there for travelling, aren't you? Yes, I mean, the, I, I was one of those people who was horrified at the, at the thought that the, uh, the sleeper service would be closed, especially the sleeper to Fort William. Um, and I'm glad, uh, and I'm sure I'm not alone in, um, in, in being grateful for the fact that uh, that's now written into... ScotRail's contracts and uh, and they keep the sleeper service running um, and it, it's extremely useful to those of us who are based in southern England to make it to the Scottish Hills comfortably and not having to drive you know four or five hundred miles up uh, up motorways to get here. And, and in, in those days Lord Howarth how often were you coming up to Scotland? Um, in those days probably oh, half a dozen times a year maybe um, you know, not in the deepest uh, of winter. I've never been a snow and ice climber. Um, but by Easter, 
uh, and certainly Whitsuntide, a May is such a wonderful month to climb um, mountains in Scotland. In the summer, the midges tend to deter you. Um, and then I would try and do uh, some hills in the late September, early October. Um, yeah. And when you were coming up to Scotland then, how long would you stay up here? I'd tend to, I'd, I'd come up for a week at a time if I possibly could. Yeah. And was that uh, hill walking in all weathers, presumably? Well, of course, that's the thing. If you, if you live in the central belt, uh, and you want to go hill walking at the weekend and you get up on a Saturday morning and it's chucking it down you um, you can always think well they're there next weekend if you've booked uh, your place on a um, on a train or more these days on perhaps on a flight then you make the journey north and at that I, I think that tempts people out into the hills um, perhaps sometimes when it'd be more sensible if they didn't, but we're all guilty of, I've come this far, so, you know, zip the hood up and, <laughs> and put the head down and, and crack on, as it were. Sometimes, sometimes a bit recklessly, perhaps. Yeah. I've, d I've done that myself, so. <laughs> um, I now know that you, uh, you live in Scotland, don't you? I, I'm now in retirement. Uh, I uh, have a house in Ock on the Black Isle, so the hills are, much more accessible, certainly the northern ones. Actually, it makes <coughs> the southern hills um, down in deepest Argyll. Ben Lomond's a long way from um, from the Murray Firth, so hills that uh, I, you know, once thought were um, more easily got at, are actually um, harder to get at if you happen to come in. Your starting point is in Manas, um rather than Glasgow or Edinburgh. Yeah. Well, something in this uh, in this interview we can come back to in a few minutes' time will be your Munro completion. But um, just before that, did you actually complete the Munros when you were still based in London, or, or did that happen when you were now living up in Scotland? No, I uh, I finished the Munros in 2001, um, actually on the centenary of Robertson's completion the 28th of September 1901 Robertson uh, climbed Neil Jarrett and kissed the cairn and then his wife in that order as everybody remembers um, so uh, no my completion was in uh, 2001 and I didn't actually come to live in Scotland until uh, the end of 2004 so all uh, bar nine um, were done from being based in London and um, if I may ask ask what um, what came first was it uh, the love of the hills or, or your title oh the love of the hills absolutely uh, the, uh, the title is an, an you may think an indulgence of mine um, when asked to go into the, uh, the house of lords i had to uh, discuss my title with garter king of arms um, and although i'm a lancashire lad uh, um, my love of the Scottish Hills was, was what I wanted to have reflected in the title. So in, I, instead of wanting to be Lord Howarth of Blackburn, which is where I'm from, um, I wanted to pick uh, uh, somewhere that, that um, spoke to my love of the hills and mountains. So I sought the title of Lord Howarth of Fisherfield because the Fisherfield, uh, Letter U, Shrasna Shalloch area is uh, is where my heart is and um, I was lucky enough to be uh, given my, you know, granted my wish and um, uh, no one, hardly anybody, half a dozen people live in, in, in the Fisherfield forest I guess at the most, keepers and stalkers and estate workers, um, there's no there's no big communities in that area and I think it came as a bit of a surprise to Lord Lyon who um, bestows these titles and he who has the last word on it uh, but um, well, I said well it's a wilderness and he, he said well we don't have anything any problem about wildernesses um, who owns it I said um, it's owned by um, Mr Paul van Vlissingen, the Dutch uh, businessman and environmentalist. Um, and he said, 
well, maybe we should ask him if he has any objections. So he was asked and he didn't have any objections. So I'm very pleased that that's how my title came about. And I was conscious of the fact that I would be the first uh, member of the House of Lords ever to have climbed all the Monroes. Many hereditary peers and the you know, own Monroes. The Duke of Montrose um, said uh, in re when I made my maiden speech in um, the Lords, he was the next person to speak. I th think he was chosen for, um, uh, um, they must have had a sense of humour about who would speak next. The Duke of Montrose is Scotland's only Duke now in the House of Lords and he teased me by saying, well, my family used to own the Munro. Um, um, it was Ben Lomond he was talking about. So um, that was uh, um, a humorous moment that I quite enjoyed. Um, now, in the introduction to this, um, I mentioned that you were the first uh, member of the House of Lords to complete the Munros. But as of um, today, you're not the only member, are you? No, there are three of us, uh, all uh, Labour peers, I'm uh, pleased to say, or uh, it's, it's a curiosity, and all of us good friends. We've done many of these hills together. Chris Smith, uh, who was the, um, the culture secretary in Tony Blair's government, was actually the first of the three of us to complete, and he, but he did that when he was in the House of Commons. Um, but I was put in the House of Lords before him, um, although I was next to have done uh, to have done my completion, and uh, Lord Elder Murray Elder um, is the third of the three of us, uh, and he he com he completed um, two or three years back now, and I don't I'm not aware of any other. Um, rivals or uh, colleagues likely to join us, but who knows? There may be people who are um, keeping it secret until they until they get to the winning number. What about uh, MPs? Only Chris Smith, I think. Um, he was he was certainly the first uh, MP. There was a, a Scottish uh, Conservative MSP, Murray Tosh. Um, who had also climbed the Munros, but I think that the four of us then are the only parliamentarians in either the Scottish Parliament, the Welsh Assembly, or the UK Parliament, House of Lords or Commons, to have actually done this. And I'm not aware of, of um, any others, as it were, following quickly in our footsteps. There, there was, of course, John Smith and uh, Robin Cook, who were mounted men, weren't they? Going, there was indeed, and... And, and I did a number of hills with John, um, I think about 13 uh, uh, Munros with him. I never climbed anything with Robin, and um, I, Robin wasn't... Um, Robin died on Ben Stack and in, a, in, in tragic circumstances, but he wasn't... I, I think it's given a misleading impression that he was a regular hill walker because actually he wasn't. He, Robin liked going to the horse racing and other things. Um, yeah. Well, if we can now come on to your um, Munro completion, because I shall imagine uh, being the first, as you are, in the uh, person in the House of Lords to complete the Munros, that must give you a fantastic sense of achievement. Um, but completing the Munros, it's, um, I, I, I haven't done it. It's something that uh, I, I wondered many years ago whether I would or not, and I don't think I ever will now. And um, having seen one or two of them, it, it must give you a, a fantastic sense of accomplishment. And a sense of loss. I, my last Munro was Ben Moore Mull, so I'm like um, the great preponderance of people who finish on that, on that hill. It tends to be an accident. You don't go to Mull um, accidentally, as it were. Um, and by the time there's not many left, it's quite likely Ben Moore Mull's one of them. So it is, um, that explains its popularity, I think. Uh, and I went with a large uh, number of my friends, including Chris Smith and Murray Elder, who we've just spoken about, uh, my wife, uh, and many other friends, some of whom are 
hill walkers, some of whom, uh, for them, it was the it was the first hill they'd ever been up. Uh, and we did it in absolutely atrocious weather. Um, that point we were speaking about earlier, you know, we've come all this far to Tobermory, so we're going to go up the hill, even though the weather is vile. Uh, and I, yes, of course, it's a great achievement, um, and, uh, and subsequently, you you feel a uh, sense of pride. But at the moment of doing it, I felt uh, a sense of loss. Uh, uh, it felt like a death. The It was very misty. The summit cairns suddenly loomed out of the mist. Um, and and I, I, I was really rather uh, upset, I have to say. I you knew this was the end, uh, um, and it didn't. I wasn't triumphant at all. Um, it's it it uh, it was a rather. I, I felt rather sad and deflated. And of course, later in the day, the champagnes flowed. We had a terrific party. Uh, it was all good fun. But the actual moment was a was a sad one. Well, the sense of loss i can understand that but perhaps because we um we briefly discussed this interview before uh, starting filming and you mentioned that as far as the munro completion is concerned of course that is what's registered within the smc um uh book that uh, that takes in the 283 mountains doesn't it well i know you're after the full completion of the tops as well yep i'm i've got two tops uh to go um, for the full round, uh, what you might call Munro's round rather than Robertson's round. Um, and because I completed um, the Munro's, in inverted commas, on Robertson's centenary, I'm hoping to live long enough to complete the full round on Burns' centenary. Uh, <coughs> who knows? I've got two to go. I can do one of them anytime I like. The last one is scheduled for the 20th of July 2023, by which time I'm, I'll be 75, if I'm lucky enough to still be alive. So the two, my end. the two tops remaining are? The two tops remaining are um, a, an obscure and unpronounceable top on Benavurid, um and uh, a sub-top of Loch Nagar, um, which is also unpronounceable. And is it the latter that will be your... Um your final yes, one. Yes, that, that will be the last one, for sure. Well, I wish you well on that. And it's been an absolute delight to uh, speak with you this evening. And many, many thanks for your time. So, uh, Lord Howarth of Fisherfield, many thanks. Thank you.